Hey guys, this week we were unable to do a regular episode, but we'll tell you why in just a second. But a lot of things have transpired in the last week. It's been an awfully busy week. Um, we are back in the Jeeps, we're off the island. The lake is melting, the boys are home from Europe, Caroline's still over there, and we spent some time in the emergency room, so let's get right into it. So earlier this week, the boys uh, arrived <clears throat> on their flight to Toronto from Copenhagen, uh, originating in Norway, and they had such a great time. They made all kinds of great memories. They came home with a. Uh, kind of losing, they were losing their voice or it sounded like they had laryngitis or something. Part of that was cheering on their friends and cousins who were playing on Team Canada over at the conference area. at, check this out. Cousin Frederick, who, who you've seen on some of our episodes, had a flight home the day before, so he was able to pick them up at the airport, drop them off where the Jeep was, and then they drove the Jeep all the way up to the lake. So they got here well after midnight, and um, we were really worried about them crossing at night because the lake has been melting, but they ended up crossing a section of open water safely. I went out to meet them. Um, and saw that they had crossed the open section and uh, so all, all was good. <laughs> but um, yeah, they got home with a sore throat and um, that escalated the next evening around midnight. Dan's throat started to close up and he was having real difficulty breathing. <clears throat> and so we made the decision to get on the snowmobiles again at night, get on all our flotation our ice picks and take our uh, Zolio communication devices and go for a rip across the lake and then make the long drive up to the emergency room. So the doctor there finally when they got to him said he had caught some kind of a viral infection, not that virus, but some kind of viral infection and they gave him some medication and sent us home. And as these things go, all of us ended up getting sick. And you know, <clears throat> in the last seven years on the road, I can't think of a time where we were sick, but this time it just knocked us off our feet. <clears throat> I've never felt so tired and every muscle in my body was sore. You felt the same way. We're all still recovering from it actually. Um, but anyway, that, that was unusual. We didn't have the energy to get up and pick up a camera or to speak or anything it, off and on throughout the week. But um, thankfully we're all recovering from that. All right guys, so I'm sure you heard we're all pretty sick and uh, you can probably hear it in my voice because I barely got one. But uh, yeah, it's been a pretty annoying couple days. Just been really, really, uh, really sick and uh, the weather's been nice though so I think that kind of makes it worse because we've been uh, looking forward to warmer days where we could get out in shorts and kind of enjoy the weather but now that that's finally here uh, none of us are feeling very good so 
I'm a bit better today, so I'm taking a drive with Lando, and uh, just gonna roll all the windows down and try and get some fresh air, and hopefully that helps out a bit. So yeah, I'm just gonna drive up to uh, the local park here. I'm not gonna do any of the hikes, but uh, just kinda enjoy the day, the last bit of sun. Four years ago, the end of this month, or actually it was in May, we came up to the island after a long road trip and I was preparing the hot tub and I opened a, a jug of chlorine that had overwintered and it had pressurized over the winter and I got a full set of lungs full of chlorine and it turned to hydrochloric acid and did all kinds of damage. I ended up, Pete raced me out in the boat, an ambulance met us here and took, us, took me into the hospital. I ended up being hospitalized with this accident. It was terrible and I've had lung issues ever since. And some of you have been kind enough to say you've noticed uh, in my voice sometimes I'm, I sound winded and so on. And that's something um, that is, we assumed is a result of the damage that was done four years ago. And so we, I went in, as soon as we got to the island this summer, I went in for tests and uh, finally today got the results back. So they had done a couple of x-rays on my chest and um, a CT scan most recently <clears throat> and um, thankfully they found that um, my lungs are clear. There is some, sc some what they call uh, scar tissue from that accident. They said scar tissue consistent with an accident and um, that's what that chlorine did but it's um, there's no tumors there's no growth there's not none no bad stuff the doctor said he said you're gonna walk out of here because you you can tend you can worry when as a family when you you know are getting shortness of breath and things like that it could be anything if you google it and use dr google <clears throat> you're gonna get all kinds of results like you're dying <laughs> but <clears throat> it's always best to get uh several opinions from the doctor so with all those tests it came out clear for which we are very very thankful i almost feel like a, a second lease on life so I feel really good today. I'm thankful for that results, but they did find bronchitis, which is something I can easily overcome. Um, and the doc said, you know, the cold weather, are you out in the cold weather a lot? And I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all I do is I go ice fishing in the wind and we go camping and in the, on the cold ice. But he's like, well, that wouldn't have helped things along. So the warm weather that we're getting now and our travels south are going to be uh, good for that. I'll get rid of that bronchitis and I should be able to talk on video without uh, losing my breath. So I'm really happy about that. So we're all recovering from, from uh, the various lung and throat issues that we got back from uh, the boys' trip. But we also got from that trip a lot of great memories and they had a, an excellent time. At the same time, all of this was going on. Um, the ice was melting rapidly and we had to make a quick decision on when to go and I think we made the right decision <laughs> yeah I that, I that was pretty sketchy <laughs> well one if if I didn't have a speaking gig which I do have lined up uh, at the end of April we would and the kids have another wedding to go to <laughs> so that's their fourth cousin getting married which is really exciting and funny thing is another cousin got engaged while they were there so four weddings and an engagement but if they didn't have a wedding and, and I didn't have a speaking engagement we would just stay on the island for a couple of weeks. We have enough food. As you know, we stayed during freeze up. We could stay during meltdown. So we were watching the ice and saying, if it melts enough to get a boat in before I have to go to my speaking gig, then we're okay. But it doesn't look like it will. So if we wait too long, there's no way off the, off the uh, island because the ice is getting thinner every single day and there's more and more water buildup. So the next morning after I got back from uh, taking Dan to the hospital, we got up that morning and we just said, that's it, we're leaving. So we immediately began to pack up and head out across the lake. All right, guys, the time has come. We are leaving the island. You never know when the ice is going to break up, but right now it's still about a foot thick, but it's changing rapidly. It's 22 degrees today, 71 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see, there's water on top of the ice in places with, uh, like I said, about 10 to 12 inches of good hard ice under there. So we're going to use the opportunity to get off the island. So we thought if the ice breaks up and we can get out by boat on time, that'd be great, but it doesn't look like it. This is probably going to take another two weeks to melt. So uh, 
we're heading out today with a bunch of gear so that we can do some camping. By that time, the, the lake should be melted enough that we can get back in here with a boat. And then we just have a few chores to do. One, hooking up our solar panels. By then, the uh, the, the mounts will be will have arrived. And we last year bought last fall we bought a, a nice 40 horse motor for our fishing boat. So we're going to go get that done. And then we're going to close down the cabin. At that point, we will have spent 12 months here at the island, which is a bucket list item we've dreamed about for many years. And thankfully, we're able to accomplish this year. But we're also very anxious to get back on the road. So our next stop will be uh, Overland Expo in Flagstaff on May 19th. So we hope to see you there. All right, so we're all packed up for the first load to go out. Um, man, it, it, you can feel the heat coming off the lake. It is really, really warm and a nice layer of slush. So fingers crossed we can all get over there safely and uh, continue down the road for a few weeks while the ice melts. But yeah, I'm not looking forward to this um, trip across the lake and I'm thankful it's our last time on the ice. We're gonna have to carry Lando on the sled. Um, he hasn't done that. So I hope we can get over there all safely. So because we were crossing our lake in uh, mid midway through spring, we had a lot to think about. Uh, thin ice being the main thing. When driving on thin ice or walking on it, you have a lot more to think about than in the dead of winter. So sleds, snowmobiles are actually pretty good at crossing water or uh, slushy conditions. We're using um, my cousin Frederick's sled and his dad's. They're both, uh, I believe one of them is pre-studded and then they've got big studs put in it. They're both at least have the big studs and almost uh, two inch tread on them. So they're pretty good for this sort of thing. And for crossing open water, I mean, you can find videos of guys crossing hundreds of feet of water. Uh, they'll sometimes have two, two and a half inch paddles on them. And you can almost drive them like a sea dew. It's pretty, pretty amazing. But already using uh, my cousin's sled, crossing about 40 feet of water was, uh, you know, nerve wracking enough. Didn't want to risk it anymore, so I think we made a good decision. You just kind of have to open the throttle up a bit, lean back, and you can skim across water. And it actually feels pretty natural. It's not too bad, but uh, definitely not something to try at home unless you are living on an island and you have no other choice. But uh, yeah, I think we made a good choice getting across when we did, because even now, as you'll see, the, the lake is breaking up and all those old snowmobile paths that I was just on like two days ago are paper thin and cracked and spiraling all around. They're disappearing rapidly, so we got out just in time. Uh, probably the last snowmobile ride of the year. Crazy to think. All right, we made it safely across the thin ice. Um, both machines are out, all four of us are out. Uh, we got Lando and all our gear, so everything's good. At this point, we're just now just get as warm as possible and melt that lake. Because next time we're coming, we have to get in by boat.
Over the next few weeks, we will be back in the Jeeps, preparing them for our next overland adventures and taking you with us to some remote and beautiful camp spots. We will be exploring the incredible beauty of the nature around us and watching as the spring melts away the snows and ice of winter. Once again, opening up the lakes and rivers and the promise of new adventures, new life, and the renewal that comes forth this time of year. We hope you will join us for the adventures ahead on the Epic Family Road Trip.